Um, thanks for being here, guys. So, um, like I said, today we're going to be working with triangles, and this is my handy dandy. Um, it's hard to see. How would it be easier to see? Let's think about it. it this is my handy dandy. There we go. Um, quilt triangle ruler. So this is what it looks like, and I've linked to it in the blog post that's in the description so you can find it, um, so you don't have to remember this and you don't like me to take notes. But this is what I'm using, and I almost wish it had a backing so you could see. Um, this is what we'll use to, um, hi Jennifer, to, to cut our triangles. So you'll notice a couple things, like that there is a flat um, edge around there's not a point here on all the where the points should be it's flattened out which is important um, when you're doing your triangle make sure you trace that on that's an important piece for putting the triangles together um, when we sew them together um, and then you also see which we're not going to use it has different sizes so you could use these different marks if you wanted to make a smaller like you could make a three inch well, it would be two and a half inches finished triangle by using these marks. And again, it has this, it shows you where you'll cut the straight edge. You use that straight bit on the black rather than the diagonal bit when you actually cut it out. Good morning, Greta. So glad you're here. Um, so, and um, yeah, so that's that. And it's got the seam allowance. So obviously you'll cut on the straight and this, the dotted, the dashed is where you're meant that will be your finished. So that's good to know for when you are um, cutting out your pieces because it, since it's see-through, you'll be able to see exactly what the finished um, piece will look like, what fabric is going to be showing through. It's a kind of like meant for if you're fussy cutting, if you want to have a specific image in here, um, if you want to have a specific image in this, then you in your triangle, then you'll want to make sure it's within these dashed lines, um, whichever size you're using, because that um, that's what you're going to see. You're not going to see what's below the dashed line or on the sides of the dashed line. So that's the ruler we're using. This is the one I have, and when you buy it, it actually comes um, with another little triangle ruler, but I'm not even positive I still have it because I've never used it. It's more of a, um, a right angle triangle than this isosceles. It's been a while since I did my geometry, so don't. Um, quote me on the names of the triangles <laughs> but um we're getting there with my son so I'll be I'll be up on geometry lingo here shortly again but so this is the triangle this is what we're using so that's the first thing you'll need then I'm also going to use um, and this is just my personal preference the way I do it I'm also going to use my big ruler but any clear ruler um any clear ruler will work um let me see let's do a measure Nope, they're quarter inch. These are quarter inch, quarter inch seams on here. Any clear ruler will work as long as it's um, longer than this. And I'll show you why in a minute. But I'm gonna use this as well. And then I think I had mentioned to you we were using today, we're gonna use that, the Tula Pink um, bundle that I had actually got in my um, so sampler box. <clears throat> so I'm gonna just, no problem, Jennifer. Hi. I'm just going to scoot you down a bit here. Um, sorry, I'm still working on Ohio. Hey, I saw some Ohio's today. My mom was a flight attendant, so she uh, um, collected these for me for a while, and then my husband was like, enough. That's enough. No more. <laughs> so I have some very – I've never actually stayed or spent time in Ohio, but I do have the Ohio mug. So I'm using my Tula Pink. That's what all of this is. Um, and then I've also mixed in some, um, let me find it, here it is, under here, so, this is Art Gallery Fabrics, and they're, they have a Pure Elements line, which is just plain, not plain because it's fantastic, it's just new um, colors, no prints, solids, that's the word I'm thinking of, solids, okay, <laughs> so the Art Gallery Fabrics is just the solids I'm using, is what I'm using is Pure Elements solids and I couldn't even tell you exactly what colors these are because um, I got them so long ago but they have a lot of really fantastic colors so um, and I, t I think I've told you before I don't know if I've chatted about it lately but I love the hand on art gallery fabrics it is so soft and I love it hi Andy hi Rita mugs up yep it's coffee I promise this time tomorrow maybe not Friday, it might be uh, spiked, who knows? <laughs> so that's what 
that's what I'm using. And I've actually already cut a bunch of triangles because I didn't want to make you sit here and wait and watch me. So we're doing a little bit of a condensed um, version today, as in I'm not doing all of it right here on video, but I wanted to show you um, <clears throat> how this works. So with your triangle ruler, um, and you could totally use um, a rotary cutter, but I like to cut mine out with a, with a this is not a triangle, this is scissors. <laughs> um, I like to cut mine out with scissors. So I'm also using my scissors. I've got my ruler and I've got my pencil. And you can see through the fabric, so that's good. And like I said, um, like I was talking about a minute ago, you kind of want to make sure it's kind of a fussy cutting situation where we want to um, um, you want to look what's going to be underneath here. So I've actually already traced this one and I kind of just line it up along the bottom of the fabric, trace all the way around, making sure to do the flat edges like I said. And then if you're doing multiples, you're going to put it here and line up the lines so you don't have to cut twice so line it up along the side I'm gonna do the side and the bottom and then I'm gonna mark again like so this is kind of hard to see since it's pencil and fabric but then you could keep going like that and if you if you don't fussy cut you can fit more in but you see I can't fit another one because I fussy cut and I wanted the birds in the image but I can get one more in here so basically what we're gonna do is you're just gonna flip flip it over 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 to get the most out of your fabric and try and place it as close to the line as you can and um, you don't have to remember this tip because it shows you the tip shows you how to do it right on the um, good morning Priscilla uh, where is it uh, right there see how it shows you it's telling you do it back and forth so that you can right here so that you can get the most out of the fabric but if it's if it's um, if the pattern has a direction if it's a directional print um, you might have to do them all the same way because if you do it this way it's gonna be um, well, I guess not because you use them both ways, but you'll have to be careful to make sure you place it the right way. Okay, so then, like I said, you can use your rotary cutter, line it up with these lines and cut it, but I prefer to use my scissors. I mean, sure why, I just am worried about, I don't know, cutting wrong, I guess, with my rotary cutter. It makes me nervous to cut things that aren't a perfectly straight line. I don't know. I'm weird. So I'm going to start by just cutting that off. <clears throat> and this is pretty, isn't it, with the birds? I just love all of these prints. They're super pretty. Um, and then you'll just continue. I won't do all of them. I just wanted to show you how this bit works because so I actually spent like several hours yesterday doing this and then um, like I said just be sure to you want that you don't want it a point you want it to be the flat edge sorry I forgot to turn my Christmas music off so you might be able to hear it. I'm kind of a Christmas music junkie like My whole family groaned the first time I turned it on. They're like, uh Not yet. We're not ready cuz I'll I mean straight 24 hours a day listen to it for quite a while so <laughs> That's funny I I do okay Greta with my rotary cutter, but for this, I just really would rather use my scissors. I just feel like I have more control. I don't know. I did not draw this line very well. I'm trying to stay on here. So you could technically use like a pen that would, or a marker, because you're gonna, um, oh, 
Oops, you're going to, these aren't gonna be visible. Oh, I did cut it. Just okay. okay, so I got one more on there, but you don't need to see me cut another one. So here's what they're gonna look like. Um, you'll have your triangles. Um, I do have a rotary cutter, but I like to use my scissors for this. I mean, you can totally use your rotary cutter if you would like, by all means. Um, just a personal preference, not, not really a good explanation as to why. So, um, I feel like, there we go. Okay, so now the next step, and my disclaimer, you guys know, as always, if you know how to do these and you have a way that you like to do them, by all means do it. Um, I'm just showing you how I like to do it and what I like to, to do. Um, so, um, um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to take, I've cut these yesterday, and this one might be a little easier to see since it's lighter. And I'm going to take this clear ruler, like I said, and I'm going to line up my quarter inch with the edge. And you're going to say, well, why couldn't you use the triangle? I mean, I tried that yesterday and the lines were just not coming out because I didn't go all the way off. It just wasn't working out. Um, that's not a quarter inch. That's a half inch. I, I do good math. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, there we go. So I'm just going to line up the quarter inch, and then I'm just going to draw that on. And I like the long one because then I can go all the way. The triangle, it, there's no way to go all the way, and it just, it's, it's hard to measure. That's why I'm using this. Then I'm just going to turn this and, again, do the same thing. Um, quarter inch. Come on. You know, and sometimes when fabric just wiggles and it does not want to lie flat, that's what this thing is doing. And then one more time. So, um, Rita, in January, <clears throat> we're going to do back to basics, back to beginning for beginners, and I think we'll do all of it. Rotary cutting, we'll do like basic, very, very beginner sewing machine um, lessons, like just turning it on and putting the bobbin in. So um, that is something we're definitely going to work on in January. So can you see now how we've got, I've got the line all the way around and there's some overlap here. Um, so this will show you, this is going to be inside that is the finish line. So all you've done is just add on those same lines that were here on your ruler. We've just added them onto, onto this. So now I don't know if I can get it to line up, but it should line up right there. So I've done that, so I've cut a bunch of squares. For this, we're gonna make a placemat, and really, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 12, about 12 triangles is what you'll need, um, but I've made a bunch more, just so if you wanna make a whole set, rather than just one, um, you'll need more. So you need 12 per. So if you were making four, you would wanna do, um, you know, you'd wanna do, 48, sorry, <laughs> trying to do five things at once. I'm gonna just quickly draw on this one too because I wanna use this, this one. So I'm using 12, and you're gonna have some loss because we're gonna cut to make it square. So the Cricut, I need to play around with it. It does have something called Snap Mat where you can take a picture with your phone, I think it is. I have not tried it, I know it exists. You can take a picture with your phone of your mat and then it'll show up in Design Space so you can move the stuff around and it will cut where you want it to be on the fabric, if that makes sense. It, so it does exist, yes, you technically can. I need to play with it and mess with it, I just haven't yet, um, but yes. So basically it does fussy cut, but it's called Snack Mat. Um, let me just get my iron woken up here okay so now we're gonna take I'm just gonna take my purple and a random color here that I've already cut um, so I'm gonna put these two together so obviously they're gonna you're gonna want one facing either way because they're gonna line up finished we want it to look something like this um, so I'm gonna put this face down and then again, let's see, we want it to line up like this. 
So this one's going to come over like this. So now, I don't know if you can see the flat edge. So what we're going to do, this is, since we talked about not having a point, we're going to take this flat point, the where that flat edge starts, and meet it with where the flat edge starts right here. And that should hopefully also help us meet this flat where that starts with this one. And that's where we want to line it up. So that's the point of those flat edges. And then I'm just going to clip it in place. And I like to clip down a little bit so I can get started. So I don't know if that was hard to see or not, but this so see right, let me if I point with this, right here where this flat part, where this, the bottom of this straight edge is where we want to meet up with this point, the top of this straight edge, okay? So those should meet, and that should also mean that those two, that these two meet at that same point right here is where you want them to meet. Hi, Tanya. So... I hope that was clear enough <laughs> for you to see because it's kind of, um, it's just knowing where to line things up is the most difficult part. Uh, hold on, it's stuck. It's stuck. There we go. We've got too many cords over here. So, <laughs> aren't the clips awesome? I just love them so much. Okay. Um, Okay, so then, and then you're gonna just use your pencil line. You wanna sew right over that pencil line. And I try and start up, like not right where the line starts, but up at the very, very top of the line. So not where your finished piece will be, but up at the top, if that makes any sense. I'll show you. And just sew right over our line here. So then we'll see what we've got and it's not gonna look perfect but um, it's not meant to line up exactly so you're you might not uh, it mostly lines up we want a little extra fabric here so that we have our quarter inch so we still have the point later on if that makes sense so I'm just going to quickly press this now there's two ways um, that you can do this. Um, you can start by putting, doing all your try, like pairing up all your triangles. I know we always, I always say to chain stitch if you can. Um, so you could start by pairing up all your triangles, doing all of them in twos like this. But I find it a, just a little bit more difficult to um, to assemble. If um, if you do them in pairs like that, so I like to do one at a time, which takes a little bit longer. Um, but I'm this is one of the only places where I'm kind of a like perfectionist about this sort of thing because it really makes a difference. Um, so then let's go ahead. So we've pressed, and this is what we've got. Okay. So now for the next bit, we. Good morning, Debbie. Oh, fun, Tonya. That's so exciting. I'm excited you're getting the Cricut Maker. It's so fun. Okay, so now we're going to take our next piece, and we want it to look like this. So this is going to come here. Now, since it's already sewn, um, it's a little bit more difficult, but start by lining up these two, this corner here with this corner here. And then it should line up that the bottom, the bottom of your straight edge here lines up with the very point of your triangle, your existing triangle, okay? So it seems a little bit more, it's a little bit trickier to add it when it's already on there, but it's not. You just have to know where to line things up. So we want this, I'll show you one more time, the bottom, this bottom corner of this straight edge 
to line up with the point here. And just, ve just verify that it, that also makes these two line up. So this is the same. This lines up with this. And so then that should line up with that point. And then I'm just going to clip. And then when I start sewing, I'm going to start sewing up here where the line starts. So I will go over this purple fabric, which is fine. I'm going to start there and sew down. Okay. And again, I'm just following my pencil line. it and I'll show you what it looks like. And then you should have, you want this overlap up here. I think I need a pointer guys. So this extra is good because we want that quarter inch um, seam so that then when we attach this, the two when we attach two sides, we'll have points. The points will meet rather than the points being cut off and having flat, um, flat edges. So that's what it should look like once we've got three together. And then you'll just continue, continue on adding, um, adding your different fabrics, just in that same way. So you'll do the same. where you would just flip it over and line up this with the point and this with this bottom edge here and sew it in place, okay? So that's how that works. I'll do one more. I'm gonna just do this last one and then we'll move on. I've already got, um, There are different sizes, so if you look at the, um, where did it go? I lost my, if you look at the ruler here, um, I guess it's easier if I, is it easier if I put something behind it? I need like a piece of paper. Okay, so if you look at a ruler, you can see here there's a line. This will make a two and a half inch finished square triangle. That's the shape we're using. So above this is where we'll have the size. There's also a line here and there's a line here. So there's, what's that? One, two, three, four different sizes on this one that you could do. So you could do small triangles, medium, or large. Okay. So there's, that's just with this ruler. That's what comes, it comes with four different sizes, which is a two and a half inch finished, three and a half, four and a half, and five and a half inch finished. Um, triangle okay um so then let's I'm gonna press this and I'm gonna show you what we'll do to get to where I am with this next, next piece that I'm gonna show you so we've pressed it and now I will break out my ro rotary cutter and I'm just gonna square it up you're gonna have a little bit of not squareness um, so all I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna measure, my starting point is gonna be this point here. I wanna have a quarter of an inch from there, here to here. So I'm gonna line my ruler up with the tip of that um, triangle. And I'm just gonna basically, unless it's really, really off, which it's not, 
Oh, thanks, Patty. I'm going to give myself a quarter of an inch and square here. So I've this is my mark. This is my point that I'm basing it off of. This from here to here is a quarter of an inch, and that's what I want. And then I'm just going to square. Oh, good way to cut for me. <laughs> Let's see. That's not very effective. Okay. So then we have a nice flat edge here. Then, thanks, Gina. I'm going to um do the same but this time I will use this as a straight edge to mark so make sure everything's straight and then I'm going to measure a quarter inch off of this point here and make sure that my ruler is also straight as much as I can on here so is that hold on so use the straight edge you just created to trim up this this one And I'm just lining it up on, making sure everything lines up here. Um, like that. This one feels really crooked. Maybe it is. Um, and you want to wait to do this until after you've got all your triangles attached because it will change things. So um, attach your whole row and then square it up, okay? So use this to um, square. I'm going to not do that because I'm going to add some more later to that um, to make another placement. So then once you've squared it all up and you have multiple rows, you're just going to sew them together. Okay. So all you'll do, which I already did this, but all you'll do is you're going to line up this flat. Let me find. Okay. You're going to line up this flat bit here with the same flat part on this side and that will make sure and then you'll clip it together and then sew the straight line to sew them all together and that will give you the points that touch like this okay and then press so this is just two strips of six that i've sewn together in that manner and then we're ready to finish off our um to get to the other the rest of the placemat tutorial so do you guys have any triangle questions before I move on to the actually putting the placemat to together because um, the triangles can be a little bit um, intimidating so if you have questions now would be the time it's pretty right Rita I love I'm like obsessed with triangles guys and especially like the bright fun fabrics those make me happy. Um, okay, well, I will keep my eye out for your questions if you're still composing them. Um, but now I'm gonna show you, now we're gonna square this up so we have a straight edge on either side. And I was thinking it would be fun to, to leave, if you square this and leave this, um, that you could make like a flag for the door, like a pendant type thing. Um, I don't, I've never tried mixing the sizes. I don't see how that would work. Um, you can totally do it, Karen. It's, you're gonna, and be prepared. You're gonna have to rip it. You're gonna, it's gonna take a few times for you to figure out exactly where the triangle should line up. You can watch me do it all day, but you have to see in person exactly how that goes. So see, I just squared that up. Like, see, this wouldn't this be fun as just like a, hold on, as like a pendant, like in a little playhouse or something? I don't know. I just think it's super fun. Okay. <clears throat> and then we're going to square this up the same. So to do that, I'm just lining this up here, making sure it's straight here as well. Which it now it's more straight and then I'm just finding kind of the middle of the points and that's where I'm going to cut it so that I have about hopefully half of a triangle left over now you have your fun little these are this is actually what the ruler looks like it's a half the other one that comes in the pack um, with this 
it's a half, so maybe you're supposed to cut halves to put here instead of whole ones and cut them up. I don't know. I This is just seems easy enough to me. Okay, so that gives us our rectangle that we're ready. And this measures, if you're curious, this is 15 by uh, 12 and a half. Okay, so 15 by 12 and a half is our size that we're going to be, that we're going to make. Um, make the placemat out of. So now there's a couple options we can use. You can use some fleece to make it a little bit thicker, give it that quilted look. You can use interfacing just to make it firm. Um, that's a personal preference. Um, we're going to use, I guess we're using um, interfacing since it was on top. <laughs> yes, that's how I make many of my decisions by what's easiest, okay? So this is just, and I'll throw the link for this. I didn't put it in the blog post. This is just heat and bond, iron on, um, fusible interfacing, okay? So I'm just gonna trim it up, give myself a piece that's the size, and this will just give it a little bit of structure. You could put a piece of this on both the front and the back to give it even more structure, or just do fleece to make it, give it that quilted look. That's up to you. So I'm just gonna trim this up. Okay. See, the fleece was like number three under there, so that would have been harder to get to. Obviously, we should have used this, right? So then I'm just going to quickly press this. Um, on to, and this will be nice. It'll help the, the seams lie real flat. And you don't have to be super picky about this because we're still gonna, it's still gonna be sewn in. If you did fleece, you could quilt it a little bit and then bind the edge of your placemat. Or I think what we'll do is just, we're gonna turn it out. So you could also do that with fleece, but that's what I'm gonna do today. Okay, so then we've just pressed it on here. Um, and then I'm just going to trim up a little bit of the extra. So we don't need that. Okay. And one more. So then we're ready. I think for the back, I'm just going to use one of these other pieces here that I didn't use before. And um, let me use this one. If you use the if you use the right fabric on the back, it will be reversible. Um, <laughs> I I've set it up so I can be as lazy as possible. <laughs> I just like don't have to move all that extra moving around. Um, so I'm just gonna lay this flat and place this face down. And then I'm gonna give it a, just a quick, you could measure and cut, but standing up to use my rotary cutter is more work. It's not super necessary. <clears throat> okay, so we've got our backing lined up, and then I'm just gonna, you, 
if you want, and I want to show you because this was fun. I found these yesterday at Michael's. They were on sale for like $2 for this trim. This would be a super fun trim to add to your placemats. And I think it would look super amazing with, with this fabric. So now would be the time if you want to do a trim to go ahead and clip the trim in. So when you, I'm going to do it this way since I've got that. So I would put the trim down, then put the edge down. And this trim is nice because with pom-poms it's kind of hard to, it really moves the fabric a lot, around a lot, but this trim is nice and flat so you're going to be able to sew right over it. So I think we'll, we will just add it. Why not? Um, and then let's see. I'm just going to kind of give myself a little corner there. Like that. And clip it in so you can see what it'll look like. So I've kind of just done a round rounded bit around the corner. Um, so I'm just going to sew in a round fashion to try and catch that. So I'm just laying the trim down and clipping it in place. And these are super fun. I hope this is enough to get around. It should be. I just couldn't. I found resist. Do you guys do that? I'm like, I'm not here for this, but I'm getting it. I got this one too. They had. I actually got like six or seven. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna just round it. Um, I sew it. So they had some really fun. Those two, but I always find those to be difficult to sew with. As cute as they are, they're a pain. So I'll show you, I've kind of just, this is how I'm adding the trim, right like that. I'll probably go back and trim, trim around the trim before I sew. And there's going to be a bit that's a little bit more difficult because when we we have to leave a bit open to turn it out, but we'll still clip this in place so that it's ready when we have a long enough one when we are ready to turn it out. I feel like <coughs> my camera is showing a different part of my room today than it normally does. It's weird. Maybe I put it in, maybe I've moved my chair over. So you could also just, as you put it on, just round, or you could round them all evenly if you're worried about that. So I'm just gonna round here, like so. So then when I sew it in place, it'll be. kind of winging it on the trim because I wasn't actually planning on using it but then I'm like it's super cute so I'm gonna use it um, and I was like I'll go back and add it later but you know I won't so I'm doing it now so I'm just trimming around the corner there <clears throat> and then I'll clip it in place and then here where it ends, I'm just gonna, since this one is easy and it's friend, cut it off and um, have it overlap and have a little place where there's a double fringe, but I don't think it's gonna be noticeable. Clip there. Go back to this corner real quick. And um, actually, 
that way. Trim around here. Oops. Now I have some extra. Bring it back here. And add it in here. So just like that. Okay. And then I think I'll just leave this side here open. You could do the side or the, um, and I'm gonna, because my memory is horrible, I'm going to, oh, hi Megan. <laughs> oh, is it raining, Tanya? Um, I was looking at um, my memories from four years ago, which we actually lived here four years ago. And my two little, little, little kids playing in the snow. It was like feet of snow here four years ago. And it's sunny and it was 70 like two days ago. So it's crazy, crazy time. Kathy, thank you. I'm, I'm a total goofball and I just can't stop. <laughs> I can't, I can't not be a total good ball. So then I'm gonna flip it over. And oops, I forgot to trim this corner. So I'm gonna trim that one real quick. And you can see on this one, on this side, I'm gonna sew around this because I've trimmed those corners. So I'm just gonna quickly trim this corner around like that. So now all four corners are trimmed. And once I sew it in place, I'll trim up the backing as well. I'm kind of regretting my backing choice now. I don't know about it. I love it with this fabric, with this whole thing that we've going on, but that's okay. So then I'm just gonna use a straight stitch and go all the way around. I'm gonna start at the bottom here of the opening that I plan to leave and just go around with a straight stitch. I feel like we should start getting snow here any day. I'm, I'm waiting. I've got my cute coat all ready to go. I've got my snow boots. Where's it at, guys? Okay, so then we're just gonna sew all the way around using a straight stitch. degrees oh my gosh Brr. I don't even know what the temperature is here today let's see I know you're all super super interested in knowing it is 44 right now and it doesn't show any signs of like going to snow weather anytime soon we're above freezing for the foreseeable future <laughs> Shouldn't be complaining. Really, I'm fine with no snow. Okay, now I've got my trim is like trying to break free here. Line everything back up. You're stuck there, trim. I did not use enough clips on this edge. real quick. Okay. Oop, missed it. 
Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna trim up this back fabric here just so that it'll lay nicely. And I'm just gonna give my corners a little bit more of a trim so they will turn out. Okay. okay there's it's not showing me comments so um oh you got snow already burr 30 Colorado springs i think growing up in colorado i'm so used to the snow like it doesn't really feel like winter until it snows um, oh, yeah, snow in New York soon. I was just watching on the news that it's going to be snowing up at the Great Lakes, too. They're ready for that like, lake snow. It's, it's coming. I got married up in Wisconsin, so used to, the, used to that snow, too. Okay, so now I'm just going to take my hand in here and turn it out. And I'm just going to make sure, make sure you, before you close it up, that your trim, that you caught the trim all the way around so that you don't have like a loose piece of trim somewhere. I think this is going to be fun. Okay, this isn't very practical. Like, I don't know if you would actually put this on your table, but it would be really cute. You know what you could use it as? You could put it like on your bedside table with a cute lamp. This is a very modern, colorful vibe which is totally me but you could do this not bright and crazy if that's not your jam because i know it's a little out there not totally and the thing i like about the trim is we can just pull it to get the seam out <clears throat> don't pull it too hard though so my trim looks good all the way around and now we've got some it's a mess because of that interfacing, turning that out. So we're going to press it all. But here's what it looks like so far. I think it's super fun. <laughs> That's a little bit crazy, but, um, oh, he's still not here, Tanya. Any day, any day now, at least that means more time, more sewing time to get him ready to be here, to get everything ready for him. <clears throat> Thanks, Suzanne. Um, oh yeah, you know what else um, you could do? And I was thinking of, before you put this all together, Thermalog also has this, which I'm obsessed with and use all the time, which is iron-on vinyl. And this makes it waterproof too, so you could just wipe it right down. And you just push, it, you roll out a piece of it and iron it on, and then it sticks to the fabric, and that makes it waterproof. Like, it's not food safe, like you can't put it in snack bags and then eat out of it, but you could definitely put it on this and it'll wipe clean. Um, unless you're eating directly off your place now, which I don't know. Are you doing that? I don't know that you are. <laughs> um, so we're making placemats today with using the triangle. Oh, so I'm just going to press here. I should, I should just bring this up so I can do it here. And you don't have to... Uh, watch my meat turned at my ironing board like that. Let's do that. And then I'm just going to press this down. And I've not tested the fringe, but I think a little bit of heat will be okay. But I'm not going to risk it and like go directly over the fringe. Just because I'm paranoid. And I have no desire to melt or start a fire. Well, I don't want to melt myself either, but I didn't mean to say I don't want to melt. I don't want to melt and start a fire <laughs> is what I meant to say. I do like the trim because it just pulls that seam right out. Makes it nice and easy. So it's not really showing my, I have to, oh, thanks, Tanya. Yes, you could totally um, keep it. You could like scotch guard it too, I guess. And I think you could wash this. 
I mean, I don't think. I know you could wash it. Um, I don't know how well the trim would like to be washed all the time. But um, you could wash it occasionally. So it's not, like I said, the fringe maybe isn't super practical. But, I mean, it's fantastic. So I, I sometimes uh, sacrifice practicality for amazingness. And this is one of those situations. <laughs> totally impractical but okay so I've got it pressed down all the way around and now we've just got this opening here that we're gonna close up and so all that is is I'm just gonna fold this one under and with the fringe it's kind of forgiving and nice so you don't have to worry super much about it lining up in the back you just want to make sure that um, it has a nice flat straight line here and then so I'm just gonna press that down and then we'll flip it over and fix the other side too. Stay how I want you. I need some of those like iron fingers or I guess people use their little just purple thing to like hold like so like hold it flat here while you're prepping so you don't burn your fingers. I think that's one of the uses for this. go. I'm just pressing that down. Um, I This is um, a shark professional, you know, for me, I'm professional. Um, <laughs> yes, thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> it's been asked a few times, so it's a shark. I, I do like it. Um, it works fine for my sewing purposes because you know I, I wouldn't use it for anything else and Megan it would probably Virgil uses it too so you know for your purposes since I know you're not the only one who will use it um, but he's the one who always puts water in it <sighs> big trouble he gets in big trouble don't put water in my iron that's not what we do <laughs> right guys Back me up on this. So then I'm just folding the back under as well. And like I said, the fringe kind of will hide if it's uneven, but I'm just gonna check. It looks pretty good. And I'm gonna press that down as well. I guess we need to make some washing bags, huh? That would be a good thing to make. Um, it's right here, see Megan? Sharp. <laughs> um, Okay, so we've got that pressed down. Yeah, I don't know that I'm happy with my back choice. It's kind of, I don't know. What do you think of the back? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, anyways, so we've got that pressed down. I might stick in a pin in just because I'm a spaz. It's probably fine being pressed. I just want to make sure that it stays when I sew around, when I get it in the sewing machine. So we've got, we've pressed it down, we've pressed our opening closed. I'm just going to do a quick top stitch all the way around as close to the edge as possible. And that'll also reinforce that trim. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start up here and just, and I happen to be using a an ivory thread. I would definitely throw in a different color um, if you want it to blend in, or like a bright pink would be fun, or even, you know, this color.
So now we've got a top stitch. Um, oh, a dust cover. Oh, you like the back? It's kind of fun, huh? It's kind of, it, I guess, so it totally has a 70s, right? Does it give you that 70s vibe? Do you see this print? It's got a face in the flower. It's a little funky. Maybe that's why. Um, maybe that's why I'm not loving it. It's just a little funky for me. Um, I like modern, but maybe not funky. Um, <laughs> Andrea, how could you be angry at me? <laughs> just teasing. Um, so that's it. This is our triangles that we made. Aren't they just, I just am obsessed with triangles. You might have known, you might know that about me or now you do. If you didn't, now you know um, that I love the triangles. And I think the fun curved edges is awesome too. Um, and we decided to add the fringe trim, which if you go to Michael's like right now, you have a ton of stuff on clearance and found all of these trims. I literally found like six or seven. They had a bunch of different colors. And somebody said this is Easter colors. This would be perfect for like making Easter stuff. Easter's not that far away. Like it's almost time to start sewing for Easter, right? Um, so it's a good time to stock up on that. And then I wish I had it right here because I want to show you. Um, they also had um, one of my favorite things for um, making headbands on sale. So I want to show you how to make some. So if you if you have a Michaels, you should go now. It's like a velvet ribbon. It's one inch, and they have a ton of so a one inch velvet velvet bleh, ribbon. Um, then we can we'll make some headbands, some really easy to make, and they stay really well. Um, not headbands. They're like they've got elastic, so I guess they're headbands. I don't know what they're called, but we'll do that too because I just picked up the um, the velvet at the store at Michaels. Um, for super super cheap and it's a bunch of it which is awesome because i before when i used to make the headbands a lot i could never find that velvet ribbon but the, that's the secret don't tell don't tell that the secret to those headbands is a velvet ribbon underneath because that really helps it stick and i have hair that nothing will stick in these headbands will stay like to work out in so we'll make those soon um it's a super quick tutorial though so i'm gonna have to think of something else to make with it <laughs> because it literally takes 10 minutes. So I'm rambling, which, you know, if you've been here, you know, happens frequently. So here's our, our placemat. We added some fringe. We used our triangle ruler, which I'll show you again. You can find the written tutorial, and I'm going to take a photo of this and throw it in there so that there's a finished um, picture too. written tutorial in the description of this um, video. Share this video so you can find it later. Um, tag a friend who you think might want to learn how to make this. Um, turn on the notifications so when we go live, you can find us. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. Are there any more questions? Um, <laughs> Suzanne, I'm happy to distract, always. I'm here for you. Anytime you need a distraction, feel free to come find me. Um, so yeah, and then here's our ruler. This is what we used today. It's in the blog post above if you're looking to get one for yourself. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. So guys have a great day and I will see you on Friday.